Is anyone else uh, confused with this launch? So let me get this straight. We see Navi hyped for months leading up to CES. Not that we expected anything to be launched at CES regarding that architecture. But then all of a sudden, we get Vega 2. And as PC Games and writes, this is the second generation of AMD's Vega graphics architecture, hence the V2, or for Vega 2. Though, because it's the first 7 nanometer gaming GPU, it's also Radeon 7. Damn, this AMD Radeon 7 is just layers upon layers of clever. But is the launch itself clever, especially in light of conflicting reports that the cards will ship in limited production? We'll try our best to break down the facts and claims made by many on the web and forecast the enthusiast graphics card market with AMD now, hopefully, in the picture. Privacy.com is the easy way to shop securely online by creating virtual debit cards tied securely to your bank account. You can even download the browser extension and let it autofill card information with a single click. Get started for free and earn a $5 credit by clicking the link below today. So when you think of Radeon 7, the first thing you probably imagine is a seven nanometer fat. This is the work of TSMC, and this is indeed the world's first seven nanometer gaming GPU, technically speaking, but it isn't the world's first seven nanometer GPU. AMD Zen 150 came before, more server oriented, and some phones like the iPhone XS are already sporting seven nanometer CPUs, but they do their stuff in house, separate issue. But remember, a lot of what we hear in terms of lithography at this point is marketing hype. Seven nanometers would have had a specific meaning, say like in the early 2000s, but today the length of it's more or less a generation rather than any physical aspect of the die itself. So just what is 7 nanometer Vega? Well, AMD calls it Vega 2. Still technically GCN5 architecture, just on a smaller, denser scale. Slightly fewer cores, slightly higher clocks, and double the memory bandwidth and capacity. TDP is about on par with Vega 64 as well, which is around 300 watts. And that explains the dual 8-pin supplemental power connectors. We expect this card to pull around its TDP figure from the wall at stock, which, I mean, let's be honest, that's less efficient in its current state than Pascal or Turing offerings, though not expected to be a deal breaker for most. Remember, this isn't Navi, so we shouldn't be too surprised by these numbers. This is, again, based on the exact same Vega architecture. You can also take all of AMD's in-house benchmarks, by the way, with a handful of salt, just to get this out there, seeing as though their numbers have been, uh, well, known to vastly miss uh, the mark in terms of how accurate they've been. Anyone remember these Fury X figures? So what Radon 7 ultimately looks like is, at least in my opinion, a refresh. That's literally what we're looking at here, folks. All in all, I'm expecting between maybe a 20 and 30% performance bump on average. That's pretty good for a refresh, but remember, we have the fab to thank for that. AMD was more forthcoming with performance metrics than Nvidia this time around, showing their card outperforming the RTX 2080 in a few choice games, including Battlefield 5, whose Frostbite engine has old ties to AMD, so no surprise there, really. I had to be just as critical here as I was with NVIDIA in this video, though NVIDIA gave us significantly less to work with. So while I'm still skeptical of in-house numbers, I should say extremely skeptical, at least it's something. By the way, one of the biggest advantages of the new fab is space, of course, whereas Vega 64's package comprised nearly 500 square millimeters, the new Vega die consumes just 331 square millimeters of space. This makes room for an additional two HBM2 stacks, which is why we're able to fit 16 gigabytes in total here. As for the rumors regarding limited supply, AMD has swiftly intervened and stated on the record that demand from gamers will be met. This would be a wonderful contrast to the original Vega launch, if I do say so myself. AIBs are also expected to be included on launch day, that's February 7th, though I haven't confirmed this with any AIB yet, uh, so I'll let you know if we hear anything from them. It all really just comes down to how heavy short-term demand is for these cards, and at 699 bucks, I honestly don't expect it to be anything crazy. People waiting for this card specifically might buy into it now, but my guess is that a lot of people are going to wait for Navi because we expect Navi will be more budget conscious. A majority of gamers are not spending money on graphics cards over about 300 bucks. Uh, we see that in Steam surveys. A lot of people are actually using two, three gen old uh, graphics cards. So I just don't see a lot of people going out and paying seven, 800 bucks for these cards. Granted, they did for the RTX lineup, so. Who knows? Speaking of which, the RTX 2080, which this card purportedly trades blows with, is currently going for anywhere between seven and 900 USD. In my opinion, at that price point, both cards are a bit expensive, and without ray tracing capabilities, the RTX 2080 at 700 bucks, which Gigabyte is currently selling one of their models for, appears to be the better buy, but we'll have to see how all this plays out when samples reach the media and independent benchmarks are published. For now, many of us are still waiting for Navi, as I said, and that's 
because we expect it to replace the current lineup of RX graphics cards like the 570, 580, and 590, meaning they should be significantly cheaper than what we're seeing here from the Radeon 7. We expect GDDR6 will be used in place of HBM to reduce overhead. We expect double the logic density of the RX 580, similar efficiency levels, and up to 40% performance boost per family. Of course, that's our hope, but I do strongly believe we'll see something similar to the transition between Maxwell and Pascal with AMD this time around, which would be phenomenal. I still remember, Pascal cards were epic at launch, and I was I was so amped for those cards because, in large part, they were really affordable, they were efficient, and the performance improvements were staggering for the price. So if AMD can pull off something similar, we'll have an extremely large void filled with NVIDIA's 50 series cards still out of play, and the 2060 outpricing its own predecessor by over 100 bucks. And look, I expect AMD to be perfectly comfortable with, with the budget gaming space. We saw this with the RX 4 and 5 series cards, anywhere between $1 and $300 seems to be the sweet spot for a majority of gamers. Vega 56 and 64's launches were obscure and disappointing initially and only recently have we been able to fully appreciate the competitiveness of such a platform, but my guess is that Navi sticks with the affordable sweet spot and undercuts NVIDIA's push for premium products and ray tracing capabilities. That's not to say that Navi will avoid ray tracing altogether, I just don't think they're going to put as much of an emphasis on it as NVIDIA has this year. AMD's Lisa Su stated earlier last year that ray tracing's relevance in the market is limited to its affordability and degree of adoption. What that tells me is that AMD will likely hold off on implementing its own ray tracing technology until it becomes more affordable and mainstream, which from the looks of things won't be anytime soon. Like DXR and DLSS, while they might look good in game, are still widely in development. That's likely thanks to ongoing performance optimizations. DXR hits graphics cards hard, even RTX cards, and until this and other characteristics of the technology are addressed, I'd put money on AMD staying out of this game, especially with respect to their lower tier cards, which we think much of Navi will fall into. So what do you think about Radon 7 and the future of Navi? Let me know in the comments below. I'm actually curious to see what you guys have to say about this, I, you know, I'm gonna be critical either way. Look, AMD doesn't pay me anything, Nvidia doesn't pay me anything, I just call it like I see it. Uh, I think Nvidia's launch was significantly more shady. That, straight up, I still think that's the case. I do think though that AMD's trying to fill a void rather quickly and that's why they're taking their M150s and kind of rebranding them and targeting them toward gamers. And maybe they're having an issue selling those cards in the server space because uh, well, AI space, any of that stuff, any commercial grade um, venture, just because RTX cards are doing so well in that market, right? When you have dedicated RT tensor AI cores, they're, they're going to do their job very well because that's what they're there for. Uh, but the N150 doesn't really have that technology on board yet, and maybe that's one of the reasons why they're kind of just pushing supply into the gaming space. We'll see, uh, but I, I'm still a bit confused. And I think until Navi rolls out, we won't, we, we'll, we just won't really know the full picture. Um, so yeah, kind of off the cuff there. That's my closing argument. What do you guys think? Thumbs up, thumbs down, you know what to do. Click that red subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for chatting with us.